beautiful souls it's tan back here again today on this astrology human design and gene keys channel with you and today we're going to be looking at a very important aspect in astrology and that is the sun and moon conjunction so before we get started don't forget to head over to my website where you can meet the tan astrology team a team of beautiful amazing and very talented astrologers who are going to be your guides on your self-discovery journeys by doing birth chart readings for you you can head over to my website meet the team and order a birth chart reading there from them um, and also don't forget to check out our new articles page where we have articles on astrology um, horoscopes coming up um, frequently so if you like that then check that out as well and don't forget to head over to my art YouTube channel um, I'm back here in the studio again so I'm very happy and I'm doing a lot of paintings now and then I have a lot of energy now to put up some more art videos so that act, that channel is going to be active now so head over there and check it out all right so I thought I would just do a sort of like mini series on sun moon aspects in the natal chart here on the channel because sun aspecting moon in a natal chart is one of the most you know prominent strongest and important things that you can look at in your natal chart or if you're meeting somebody with your friends or your romantic partners or your family and they have some sun moon aspecting each other it's like very important that you you know look at that and if you want to understand the person a little bit more and understand the core of their being and their makeup so without further ado let's look at the first aspect here in this mini series that's going to be the sun conjunct moon in the natal chart the sun in astrology and how i like to look at the sun is the sun is representative of your fathering figure in your life so it's usually going to be somebody in your life that has impact so it's a representative of someone in your life who took on a male authority role but an authority male figure in a sense that they were there to build up your sense of confidence and your sense of um, expression creative expression in your career life so how that person has built up your confidence and your creative vision your creative expression and how that's going to impact your career and your life path is what the Sun represents and then in your own natal chart it is going to represent the creative vision that you have in your life your ego structure and of course your life path and how you want to shine in the world and be seen that's your sun and the moon in astrology in this case is then going to represent the female or the person who took on a feminine role in your life in terms of caretaking and protecting you and nourishing you and providing you with the physical needs and the emotional and the mental needs and the word need is very important when we're looking at the moon because it's something that you can't go without you need it so the person who is providing that for you so that when you become an adult and you kind of grow up you are able to form particular habitual patterns mental patterns emotional patterns um, patterns in terms of the way that you feed your needs to support yourself to nourish yourself and to use those habits to support the creative vision of your sun okay so when the sun and the moon are coming to conjunct in astrology and this video applies to if the sun and the moon are in the same sign this may also even apply because conjunctions are very strong especially for luminaries of the sun and the moon so um the closer the conjunction the more this is going to be felt the more the stronger some of the things i say in this video is going to be the further away the um more you can say faded or the, the less of an impact the thing they say in this video is going to have and conjunctions are when two planets are making an energy exchange with each other that are blendable so it's almost like a smoothie you have the sun and the moon you put in a smoothie you blend it together right so what happens then when the sun and the moon comes to conjunct in the natal chart is that your father or the fathering figure in your life as we mentioned previously in the introduction part and the mothering figure in your life the way that 
the fathering figure build up your confidence and in, into getting the things that you want in this life and the way that the mothering figure gave you the nourishment to for you to nourish yourself with regards to the things that you need in this life they're very much so similar they're almost like the same it can also be said that for psychic young moon people your mother and your father or the male figure in your life and the female figure in your life are going to be sorry there's just a, a blackbird on my window so it's very cute but yes um those two figures in your life they had something that was just very similar to each other maybe they were similar in personalities in one way or another that's possible or you perceive them to be similar in one way or another sometimes what i do notice and of course aspects is going to change this but this video is not about other aspects the sun and the moon it is just the sun and the moon conjunct to each other sometimes what i've noticed is that the parents with this conjunction may even be of us the same sign or they could be in astrologically astrologically speaking or they could be of signs that have like the same element or maybe the same yeah are the same element like you could have, if you have a conjunction of sun and moon, maybe your father was a Pisces and your mother was a Cancer sun. Or, or they were just very, father was a very strong Pisces type, mother was a very strong Cancer type. So they were sort of blendable and similar in terms of their elements. So that's something to keep in mind that that's not going to be true for everybody, but it's quite common. And so um, what happens is that your, if you have this conjunction, you tend to be very instinctual in the way that you are in terms of your feelings and, um, and your, you tend to have what is called emotional congruence. And therefore, it makes you someone who is actually quite self-contained. And so what this means is that you're going to be somebody who can sort of make decisions in your life most a lot of the decisions that you make in your life you don't really need advice from other people you may not really need to kind of reflect that off of other people no you can but at the end of the day you come back to that space of well this is what i want anyways at the end of the day even though i've talked to several people but it's like i kind of know what i want and i know how i'm going to form certain habitual patterns to get what i want and so why do i need to um get advice from other people so that could be kind of the energy that you have there. Um, there tends to be an ability to simply express through the sun what you feel. Now, this doesn't mean that you are not deep. It just means that when you are expressing what you feel, it's the aura and the energy of the way that you express what you feel that we can say makes it easy for people to kind of get you if that kind of makes sense so you don't you're not the type that n this can change according to other aspects and things like that but typically you're not going to be the type that you know tries to project some of your emotions onto other people in order to understand how you feel if that kind of makes sense it's kind of like i know what i feel and I'm going to tell you this is what I feel. You can have very deep feelings and you can say, I feel very deeply about this. So there's that you know, simple way of you know, saying how you feel. They, if you have this aspect, you tend to want what you feel you want. That kind of made sense. So let's say that you feel hungry. You're just like, I want to eat because I'm feeling hungry. Now, if you, you feel you know, connected to people, you can say, oh, I want to be part of this community because I want to have this connection with people. So there's that congruence there but because the sun and the moon are blending with each other and it's so blendable and you can easily sort of want what you feel and you can usually get that sometimes this conjunction makes it so that you don't really strive for more if that kind of makes sense um, your goals for example may not be so we can say high you may not have such big goals or big ambitions now of course, if this is in the 10th house, it can definitely change that. But even if it is in the 10th house, it's almost like you can get what you feel that you want so easily that for you, it's not a place of challenging yourself. So that's what I tend to notice with Sun Conjunct Moon people is that 
they don't really enter into situations where they're challenging themselves. You can be the CEO of a company, you know, and people can feel like, wow, you're super ambitious and, you know, you're um, striving to achieve so much. But that was easy for you to get. And maybe it's more difficult for you to do other things. Like maybe it's more difficult for you to, um, let's say, you know, travel around the world on your own. But because you feel that's difficult, you're like, kind of like maybe I'm not going to challenge myself into doing that, if that kind of made sense. So, um, the, you know, you tend to choose goals that matches your abilities, which means that you may not feel this need to strive for much. But of course, that can change depending on certain transits, which you have to also check depending on, you know, certain people that impact your life and things like that. But with a sun conjunct moon, it can be very hard for people to impact your life and, and who you are at all because you're pretty solid in that. So we can say that you have more of a transparent or open character. Now, of course, this is not to say again that you don't have depth or that you don't have certain human complexities, which everybody has, but in the way that you come across in your aura, you tend to be, you know, sort of, we can say loyal or truthful or honest about who you are and what you want in that sense is what I mean here. So you are able to going to be able to emo you're able to going to be able to emotionally soothe yourself in a way that um, a lot of people you know may want to be able to learn from as well in a sense that like if you're just having a bad day but you have to work you know okay I have to work but after work I'm gonna rest today I'm not gonna go out with friends or I'm gonna tell my partner that I really need to rest because I need to soothe myself so it's um. It's a very solid type of character there. And usually with Sun Kajang Moon people, you are not as prone to codependency as a lot of other people are. Now, you kind of like, and of course, like I said, transits and maybe your solar returns and progressions and um, things like that could change this. But typically, like when you are witnessing toxic behaviors in another person or when you feel like somebody is trying to manipulate you you know things like that you tend to have enough self-respect and self-confidence to say i'm not going to stay in that relationship some of the challenges of having this conjunction or of like people um who are in a relationship with you may feel that you are challenging in certain ways the first challenge is that when you have a sun conjunct moon, you could also be the type to, to feel like your experience is also everyone else's experience. Like the way that you feel or think about certain situations, that should be how everybody else also feels and thinks. So there can be this kind of thing like, well, people should kind of feel and think like them, right? So for example, let's say that, you know, um, you have a sun conjunct moon and you feel like you know, on your mother's birthday, you want to give certain gifts and you want to shower her with love. But your brother or your sister or your siblings, they don't necessarily do that. They just kind of write your mother a happy birthday message without showering them with gifts and things like that. You may not say or do anything about it depending on like other aspects and, and houses of your sun and moon, but you can think and feel like, why are they not doing that? You know, this is the correct way to do it. And this is the, the experience that my mother should have of how I show her love and express my feelings to her. My siblings should also be doing the same because of the way that our mothers raise us. So it's, it kind of limits your ability to um, have a wider perspective of other people's experiences of certain things. Now again, I'm going to repeat myself. Transits, your solar returns, progressions, and relationships can change this and alter this and you can grow from this. So they have a confidence right, and an assurity that sometimes can be a little bit bossy to other people. Um, and this is something I've noticed here as well, that they tend to be like you have, you tend to, with the Sangha Jung mood, like feel like, because you feel like people should do the things the way that you do it. You kind of tell people how things should be done. And sometimes like when you want something and you feel like, oh, that person is free today to, to get that for me. So uh, can you go and get me a cup of coffee today? Because you're not doing anything and I'm quite busy here. You know, it can be kind of a little bit of that energy coming in. And look to the house that the Sangha Jung moon is in because that is going to tell you like who they're going to be bossy with you know if it's in the seventh house you know that's going to be like with close intimate relationships 
um, something interesting there that you know it's I wouldn't say it's something that you have to change because you have a sunken junk moon it's probably going to be really hard anyways for you to be impacted by other people's advice but you know there are certain situations which this bossiness can be useful but there are going to be certain situations where it's not going to be useful so yeah i think that's a beautiful souls of my sun conjunct moon interpretation i think in my next video i'll be doing the sun opposite moon so stay tuned for that if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you have a sun conjunct moon comment below what has been your experience with this or if your sun and moon are like in the same sign um are you a self-contained person are you confident or how how is your experience with this conjunction and yes, don't forget to check out my website, browse around for some of the services that we have there, meet the Tad Astrology team, who are amazing, talented astrologers. I'll, they'll be guiding you on your self-discovery journeys by doing readings for you, so check that out. And um, yeah, that's it. Have a beautiful day, beautiful souls. Bye.